I guess by now your head is infested with mongooses. Or is it mongoose? Well, I am no English major, so I have no clue what the plural is. In any case, that brings us to the topic of this lecture, mongoose population. What exactly is mongoose population and how is it useful in our express application? Let's talk about that next. As we realized, documented databases, the NoSQL databases, are not designed with relations in mind. Everything that you need in a document is stored completely within the document. Well, that is pretty much the way things operate with NoSQL databases like MongoDB. So uh, you do not have support for relations that you might be more familiar with from the relational database world where you have records and then records can reference other records and so on. And then you do joins in order to join the information from the records and so on. So that kind of support doesn't exist in no SQL databases, at least to a large extent. MongoDB has taken a few steps in that direction, even with the no SQL databases. But in general, document databases expect that all documents are self-contained. So which means that all the information that is required is within the same document. Now, of course, there are situations where you have other documents that already contain the information and you may want to pull in that information into your existing document rather than duplicating that information. So this is where um, MongoDB uh, or Mongoose allows you to store references to other documents within a current document. The reference to the other document is done by using the object ID of that other document. Now, if that is the case, then Mongoose uh, allows you to perform a way of taking the information from the other document and then enclosing it inside the current document using the Mongoose population support. That is what we will discuss in a little more detail. Mongoose itself, as we realize, being a, a, a module built on top of MongoDB, doesn't have explicit supports for joins the way we talk about joins in the SQL world. To understand how this referencing of the other document in a document helps us and how it is actually structured, let's take a look at an example. In this example, uh, we'll look at the dishes document that we have uh, that we have been using in our exercises. In the dishes documents that we store on the server side, we notice that we also store the comments. And within the comments, we also store an author field within the comments. And the author field explicitly contains the name of the uh, person who submitted that specific comment. Now, uh, since we already have a user's document within our database, as we saw in this um, uh, module, we had extended uh, our uh, Express server to support users and whereby you can register a user and then you can authenticate users and so on. So the user document can carry additional information about the user already. And so when a comment is posted by the user, instead of storing the user's name within the comment itself, why not have a reference to the specific user that has posted the comment? This is helpful not only in terms of being able to deal with the fact that this comment is posted by the specific user. Later on, we will see that if you need to allow users to modify or delete documents, you may wish to restrict that kind of operation of a specific user to only those comments that that specific user has posted earlier. So uh, this is where um, the, even though we are using sub documents within our uh, MongoD, Mon Mongo document, um, if we can reference another document within the sub documents using object IDs, then Mongoose helps us to do population of this information from the other document in the, into the current document. So this is where Mongoose population comes to our rescue. Taking this idea further, let me show you a detailed example from the comments schema that we have defined earlier. So in the comments schema, 
we already have the rating field and the comment field which we have already specified there. We also used to have the author field earlier. For the author field earlier, we were storing the author as a string and um, uh, the default value also for the author. Now, instead of storing the author as a type string, if we now turn the author into a type of mongoose schema types object ID, so which means that the author field now will contain an object ID, which is a reference to a user document. How do you ensure that this is referencing a user document? So this is where this additional property called ref, which specifies that the schema of the document that you're referring here is of the type, the user schema and the model that we have already added earlier. So in this case, the comment schema is now extended to store the author information, but the author information is in the form of an object ID, which is a reference to the user uh, document that is already stored in our database. Now, how does this help us? This is where, as I said, Mongo's population comes to our help. So how does Mongo's population work? With Mongo's population, the way Mongo's population works is that it automatically replaces specified parts within a current document with, which has reference to another document by the information from that other document. So in the comment schema, for example, you have an author field that is referring to a uh, the I, object ID of the user document that is already in your database. So with Mongoose population, when you ask Mongoose to populate this dish document, then it will populate the information about the author in the comment field from the user document. So the information about the specific author that is referenced there will be fetched in and then added into your dish document and the compound document will be constructed and then sent back to you. How do we ensure that this happens? This is where uh, the cross-referencing with the object ID, as we have seen, helps us. How does the population uh, actually happen? in code. Taking a look at how we would populate, for example, the um, the dishes document that we have just seen earlier. Earlier, we were doing dishes find to find all the dishes in our database. Now, once you find the dishes document, then you can say populate and then supply within the populate as a parameter the specific field that needs to be populated. So here we are specifying comments.author. Now, the expectation is that the comments.author field is actually an object ID which references to the user document. And that is how we have set up our comment schema already. So this populate call that we perform here will then go and fetch from the database each individual um, author's record um, or the user's record and then take that user document and, and populates it into the dishes document to construct the compound document from here. And then after that, of course, the subsequent handling of the data that you have obtained and then replying or uh, returning the data to the client can take place at this point. But of course, let me caution you that this population operation is not an easy task for the server to do because every single dish you will have to examine each and every comment. Then for each and every comment, then you need to find out the object ID for the user. Then you go and then fetch that user document and then populate it inside the dish document. And then that has to be repeated for every single comment that is contained in the dishes document. And it essentially means that it will take a much longer time for the server side to complete the request and send back the information to the client side. So I would suggest that you should use populate very judiciously. You should use it only in circumstances where you really need that information. If, for example, you are simply constructing the menu for your restaurant, when you're just constructing the menu for your restaurant, you may not really need to populate the information about the author of each comment into the comment document at all. Because when you are just rendering the menu for your restaurant, you are not going to be showing the comments for, uh, for the specific dish. But instead, 
if the user is examining a specific dish and wants to see the comments, at that point, you may wish to um, execute a server-side request and then fetch the common information with the uh, author information populated in and then obtain that for uh, use within our client side. So again, populate is a wonderful way of doing things when required, but use it very judiciously only when you really require the information. So that flexibility that populate provides for us is the fact that we don't need to populate when we don't have to, but we can populate the information when we really need that information. With this quick understanding of Mongo's population, let's move on to the exercise where we will modify the uh, dishes schema, the comment schema within the dishes schema, and then use Mongo's populate to populate the information within our dishes when we are returning the dish information to the server side. Also, this also implies that when a comment is being added to a specific dish, the author of the comments information has to be captured on the server side. Now, it so happens that the way we have developed our server, we already have this information being provided for us. When we authenticate the user, the user's information is already loaded into every request that comes in from the client side. And so, uh, the user information is available to us. So when we are posting the comment on the server side, we will also capture the user's ID and then store it in the author field of the comment schema. This should be done automatically on the server side. The client should not be allowed to fill in the author field explicitly, but the server side should validate the user and only for users that are signed in, you would allow them to first, first of all, post comments. And then when they post comments, you will automatically fill in the author field for the uh, comment document by uh, substituting the author field with the object ID of the user. Now in the exercise, you will see me doing that. So watch out for that specific uh, thing in the exercise. With this, we complete this lecture. Let's proceed on to the exercise to examine the use of Mongo's population.